guys uh, welcome to another episode of Covera Insights where we talk to industry veterans from across the spectrum to glean insights into personal finance management uh, today we have two of the most fun people you will meet in the industry uh Bhavnan. first let me introduce Vikas Vikas is the CEO of MK Investment Managers Limited uh, he is an industry veteran he has been the CEO of Edelweiss Asset Management the global CEO of Enam Asset Management and the list continues uh, so there's a long list of senior management roles that he's he's held uh, his industry affiliations include a seat um, at the mutual fund Adv- advisory committee and he was also on the board of so welcome vikas uh, great to have you here uh, we also have praveen praveen is the market editor at et prime so yes you have to pay to read what he writes that's how good he is uh, he has tracked financial markets for the longest time He's written a book um, about how fund managers make you money. Uh, before ED Prime, Praveen was, the, was with Forbes India magazine. And he likes to add that he's a huge fan of dystopian literature, right? So it's a, it's a pretty awesome setup. Welcome, Praveen. So the overarching theme is um, index versus active, stocks versus mutual funds. Um, should an individual investor, should an investor who it's not their day job, you know, they, they work somewhere. Um, they get a salary every month. Should they be looking at picking stocks in Indian markets? And are downturns a better time to be a stock picker versus in a bull market? So let's start with that. And eventually we get to the index versus active debate because that's what this is based on. It is just that you as an investor, if you're clear, if you have a system to invest, then every market is a stock picker's market. And as people become smart and smart, then the opportunities to pick up stocks actually starts falling. So if you ask me if there, if there is an opportunity to pick up stocks, at any point in time, there is some opportunity. It is just that investors just need to get smarter and smarter with time. I would uh, tend to agree. I think we, we, we have this uh, habit you know, of, of uh, classifying things into boxes. It's either this or that. Uh, it right. can be here or there. It can be black or white. It can be active or passive. Actually, the truth is somewhere in between. Uh, you will also realize that uh, most investors themselves uh, do not have that insight into the markets. Even the savviest, one is insight and one is time. Uh, insightful right. investors don't have time and people who have time don't have insights. So you will always have this uh, you know, sort of uh, middle room where you will have people having different types of exposures. For example, if you ask me personally, uh, I have stock exposure, I have mutual fund exposure, and I have ETF exposure as well. Okay, right. And by no stretch of imagination am I not an insightful investor. Now, as you go down the insightful curve, probably it will change a lot more. People will have more mutual funds, more ETFs, and uh, lesser stocks. But I think there is no uh, uh, right thing or wrong thing. In terms of stage of evolution, in terms of information, uh, it's anybody's guess. We've been talking about the ETF revolution happening since 2001. Uh, but my sense is that uh, it's on its way, but to galvanize it, it's not just information. There are a variety of things which need to be put in for making it more attractive to investors. Right now, investors uh, are aware of ETFs to some extent, but they don't know how to partake it and you know don't know how to utilize that particular thing. So till the time that happens, uh, you know you're right. not going to see that movement towards ETFs. For an individual, they have to decide whether they want to be a stock picker or they want to outsource that capability. If you're going to outsource that capability, then you have a whole range of product. You can go to it, starting from uh, mutual funds, ETF, PMS, AIF, where you're literally outsourcing this ability to uh, to kind of you know um, pick stocks for you. That's what the fund manager is doing. Um, or you can buy index funds. In your own investment experience, how do you contextualize how much of it should be in stocks and how much of it should be in kind of you know mutual fund or equivalent uh, kind of category so that's question one and the question two that follows is that if you're going to a if you're going to go down the mutual fund or etf route do you want to pay for that uh, expense ratio to get that fund manager or would you rather be just you know i'm very happy with index returns because this is my uh, market beta diversity play uh, so interesting. I think uh, before I answer both these questions, I, just to put things in context, I think the big leap of confidence, if you will, uh, for the mutual fund industry in particular has come in because of this mutual fund SAIA campaign. I think this right. is one of the biggest contributions SEBI has made in recent times. So not only are people aware, but people are comfortable now with things like equity, with things like mutual funds, because more often than not, early you to hear stock market gambling here. I don't hear that as much at this point. Simultaneously, what it has done is it has led to a 
uh, an explosion in terms of advice which is there so people are now asking show me what is available in terms of investment options and people and there are advisors responding okay right so whether it's an online advisor offline advisor you know wealth management firm uh, because of which i think people are getting fairly more comfortable with equity so if they start following the advice which is more in terms of asset allocation typically an advisor will come and tell you this much in equity this much in debt and in equity itself you know he will say this much in mutual funds this much in ets and on the insistence of the investor he might say okay you can invest directly in blue chips or you can pick up these stocks or whatever right but it is more of a, a focused discussion which happens with the advisor more often than not which allows all of these uh, aspects stock stocks mutual funds pms af etfs into a client's portfolio it is not by uh, default it is usually by design now in terms of the expense ratio which you mentioned about i think uh, one must understand which is not really understood that the expense ratios in mutual funds in particular has gone dramatically over the last 20 years uh, you know if you were an investor right. in 95 96 you would be probably paying 10% uh, which hmm. would include uh, 6% uh, manage, 6% uh, expenses 2.5% load and 2.5% investment management fee or there about 10 to 11% you would have been paying right now for a direct plan you're paying 1 1.5% but the key thing here is that Uh, what people tend to look at is cost they don't look at what is the opportunity of late right. you know in this entire pandemic when people talk to me i realize that they have got stuck into direct plans of funds which they thought they could uh, you know uh, do a great job on but they're underperforming uh, big time so i think uh, right. uh, this whole cost versus benefit thing needs to be played in it there's no there's no uh, direct answer but if you ask me what i do i have a financial advisor of my own i at this point of time i have a financial advisor of my own and his job right. is primarily to make me stop from making mistakes sure if you actually look at data uh, at least in the mutual fund space uh, we do know that in the large cap space it's most large cap funds even in india are not outperforming their benchmark right um, then that question becomes very relevant that what am i paying this extra expense ratio for and that extra expense ratio can Absolutely. be 1% extra for a direct plan to as much as 1.5 to 1.75% more for a regular plan. so how does um, how do you then go back to that investor and what then becomes the value add for those funds and i, and I think that's the that's how we think about kind of you know contextualizing that like um, I, no one denies it that if there is a transfer of value that is happening then someone should be uh, one should be paying for it it's becoming harder and harder to quantify that transfer of value and the mutual fund industry is a matured industry i mean you guys you guys can keep on telling me that uh, means like the tier 2 guy has not invested the tier 3 guy has not invested as far as i am concerned it's a 20 year old in industry okay if not 20 actually more than that okay 25. so as far as all ha huh, 25 years everything that is happening in that industry is like any other mature industry these guys will hold their fort as far as their uh, as the market shares are concerned so with all saying all that their expense ratios will come down because of competition and uh, because the markets are matured the industry is matured finding alpha is going to be difficult so i don't know the only way out is like you can just create a uh, a system of asset allocation and move forward and the second part is like you know if you really want to make money you have to take higher amounts of risk and uh, will mutual funds give you the options of taking higher amount of risk we really don't have that kind of products as of now when it comes to like you know that aspect is concerned so we are typically moving from that point and i also feel that the investor is also a matured guy actually over the last four five years i feel that so he might make some mistakes of finding the right funds and all but if you look at the trajectory everyone is matured the industry can go to keep on growing uh, incrementally so uh, coming back to that other question should people be picking up in such a situation should people be picking up uh, uh, stocks on their own the answer is that if you have a system and if you have the maturity and the risk taking ability you should that is what i feel and if you have a buy a etf and do your stuff man like go and take some risk in the market but of course with a system in hand with and probably like you know you should be very clear about uh, i mean like you cannot jump into the sea without learning to swim i'll put it that way okay yeah that and i think yeah, really most of what you have just said applies largely to large cap funds 
Okay. And I can vouch for that because especially in large cap funds, what you are saying, and this is my personal assessment that yeah. this whole mutual fund thing is getting stripped in three ways. The large cap fund thing. You have basically the alpha in the large cap space, which is going to concentrated portfolios in the PMS and AIF segment. I can tell you personally, I run a scheme of a concentrated portfolio of 12 stocks in one of my schemes, which is attracting unprecedented attention at this point of time, especially from family offices. And this is completely large cap, right? right. On the other hand, you know, there are institutions which will take the beta route. They will take the index route. So what you're effectively left with in large cap funds is more like a ULIP sort of a, a product wherein you'll keep yourself benchmark hugging and you know, one or 2% here and there, which is not actually going to create wealth for you over a longer period of time. Mm. Now, this is exactly where I expect an advisor to step in and say, listen, get out of large cap funds. There are other options available. If you have this much of money, you know, why don't you look at ETFs? If you have this much of money, I can introduce you to, uh, you know, but see, PMS the point here is no, it's not like mid caps and small caps have done any better in India. And it's not I'm just like coming to that. even, I'm, even if within the PMS AI space, um, if you, are, if you, are, if you adjust for survivorship bias, their returns are equally uh, bad. It's just that they all show the gross ret- returns. And then when you, when you get to net returns, it's, it, 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 it see, at the end of the day, it just becomes the same coin toss, right? You, in 1975, you happen to get Berkshire Hathaway, you know, you happen to meet, uh, invest there and you had a killing. But how many people actually did that? Very, very few, right? So I think um, by definition, 70% to 80% will be invested in large cap. That's how markets work. Mm. That's why they are large caps, right? No, I mean, you is, can slice and dice it. This is again if, a, everyone, if everyone invests in small caps, small caps will become large caps. So that's a mathematical certainty. You can't, you can't, you can't say, oh, you know what? Everyone should start going to, everyone should say, okay, no, you, you can't do large caps. You should go to small caps and mid caps. That will not work at all anyways. Plus, even in India, there is no small cap premium. We have run regression. We have done any and all analysis possible. There is no small cap premium. There is no mid cap premium. It comes and goes. Three years ago, there was a gentleman who was on TV all the time. Today, is there, today there is some other gentleman who's on TV all the time. So even with PMS and IAIF, I have yet to see any statistically significant kind of, you know, outcome that says, yes, you can. Can you do it is a different question. Of course you can, right? But have we seen that evidence in the long term in India? That becomes a very different question to then grapple with. So how, no, uh, as, a, as an advisor, because we do advise, we do advise people uh, on where to invest, uh, invest. We specifically say don't invest in small cap and mid cap because we don't see any alpha there. And we have been saying that since 2017 and people would come and they would really say, how can you say don't invest in small caps? Look at small cap index it is doing this look at small cap portfolio is doing that right but if you look at the long run history it there's not there's none i mean it's so surprising that there is no alpha like even before cost there is no alpha yeah so uh, uh, hmm. i i'm going to i'm going to agree with most of what you're saying okay with a few uh, differentiation but i just like to round off my large cap point uh, Pravin mentioned a very significant thing before I come on to your point. He says that most of the money will go to the larger fund houses and there's hardly any competition left. I would not completely agree because most of the incremental money, at least equity money has been going to two or three fund houses like Moti and Mire and uh, Can Rubeco. Of course, yeah. they will take some time to have the brand salience which the other guys have. But, you know, it's not like it's an open and closed. Everybody else is going to die. I don't think that is something I'll agree with. Now on your mid cap, small cap thing. I think there is a fair bit of uh, truth in what you're saying. And uh, I have seen several of these analysis, several of these data points at different points of time. You know, at different right. points of time, data throws up different conclusions. Three years ago, this would have shown right. up a different conclusion. Now it is showing up a different conclusion. The bottom line is, uh, the, uh, there, there are two things which I understand. Okay, One is there has to be a process. There has to be a process. Right. There has to be something which... You know, I think when we were having an offline discussion, you did mention something about tap on the shoulder to book profits or cut losses or something like that, right? And right. two is there has to be uh, some semblance of, uh, you see, in a small cap fund, you just can't keep on taking money. In a mid cap fund, you just can't keep on taking money. You know? exactly. The more you do that, you will keep on expanding your universe. My and belief is that if, themselves. Absolutely. And that is, that, is the, that is the fiduciary responsibility of the asset manager to say, okay, listen, this is not what I'm going to do. And some of them have done that and have created excellent track records. Right. Uh, you know, I am of the belief personally that India itself is a mid and small cap story as a country. Okay. And okay. if we are to do what we are to do, the mid and small cap space in this country will do extremely well. But this is more on a belief point of view. On a data point, uh, data point point of view, I think we can have this argument. 
for anybody to make money, there has to be direction, there has to be philosophy, there has to be a process at work. And in a fiduciary capacity, you have to stop the inflows at some point of time, right? So uh, yeah. that is actually not at play. Either in the mutual fund space and to a large extent, even in the PMS space. Some of the PMSs which I see have gone very, very large. Okay. And those stock picks are now starting to resemble like smaller mutual funds. So, you know, it's, it's, it's turning out to be fungible. However, if you look at the newer guys who've come in, okay, uh, hmm. guys who don't have that sort of uh, AUM and, you know, that sort of nimble footedness, they are delivering good returns. Size is always the enemy of return. So you are talking about small funds doing well. Also, like, you know, we have to see that if they achieve a significant size and then we want to see, like, you know, will they be delivering the same returns? Because if you really map it down in terms of asset size and returns, these funds are still very small, so they are in a position to give returns. If you are running any fund above 10,000 crore, your ability to generate returns is going to fall drastically because you just don't have that much opportunities out there. So, so you know, if you have a 30,000 crore fund, see the ability to basically run it successfully or delivering alpha. It is extremely Praveen, difficult. Uh, Praveen and Vikas, right? So this is the core dilemma, right? Let me like kind of rephrase. This is the core. This dilemma. is exactly what but what I've been saying. Plus, if this it is, is exactly what I've been saying. Plus, then it is hard for the fund manager to deliver alpha. If the AUM is higher than a certain X, then it is very hard for uh, the fund manager to deliver alpha, right? Because of the size issue. Now, if for in the smaller funds, identifying which fund manager will do well is equally hard. Mm, yeah, so you could have. So, and effectively that's what happens. Mutual fund industry, fund management industry is a pyramid industry. You have a lot of small guys, few graduate to becoming medium size, few graduate to becoming large. If the investor just looks at whoever survived and had a successful return, then they would have a very different conception of how investing should work. But in reality, if I have to go today and say, and look at, you know, this is the exact same question that happens in security selection also. If today I have to go and look at 250 small cap companies and say that these 25 will become large caps, I will have an error rate which will be quite high. But out of those 250 in the next 10 years, it's almost a certainty that 25 will become mid cap or 25 will become large cap. Mm. So, and I think the, the, the whole investment dilemma comes around from this that um, if you're very large or if, it, if you're large enough in the in, in a small cap or a mid cap space, it becomes really hard for you to deliver that return. And if you're much smaller, then it's very hard for me as an investor to identify who's the right guy to go to. Here is where a process works. Now, if you right. look at the mutual fund industry, I mentioned a few names like Axis, you know, uh, Mirai, Can Rubeco. And uh, I, I know for a fact that there is a very strong process which is at work. And the process largely contains of a risk management framework, not a process for stock selection, but risk management framework. If I have to just, uh, I'm just picking up what, what you left in terms of uh, the Nifty Top 250 and you were quoting some examples. Now, we've done some back-tested analysis on which we've actually launched a product. Okay. The Nifty right. Midcap 150. Okay, as a universe, if you have the right filters put in, a set of rules which are put in, okay, uh, and you do active rebalancing of that particular portfolio, we've created a 20 stock portfolio and we've done back tested analysis for, uh, I think, since 2008 9 on pretty much the same portfolio hmm. using the same filters. It has outperformed the index consistently. I'm saying back testing, okay. And that back testing has been on the basis of not just selection of stocks, but also allocation. So we are trying to control the selection bias and the allocation bias. Correct. That has given very good returns. My limited point here being that while we would attach a lot of importance to size, you know, and to the merit of a fund manager, what we often forget is the risk management framework in place. If there is a strong risk management framework in place, okay, which ensures that bhav bhagwan hai aapko matlab at a particular point, you cannot hold on to a particular segment of uh, stocks for, for the rest of your life. Uh, yeah, you have to book profits, that. you have to get in. That, you know, that will tend to uh, uh, sort of deliver returns. Yeah, see, fair enough, fair enough. See, but I mean, I, see, I, I come from a quant background, right? I, I was a quant portfolio manager. So my boss used to say that uh, never invest in a strategy where the back test does not outperform the index. And never, <laughs> never, never, never invest in a strategy where the back test outperforms the index massively. Back test, see, if, if my strategy can't outperform the index in a back test, that reflects very poorly on my intellect. Absolutely. Like I, I very <laughs> I clearly mentioned, 
<laughs> you are right. Okay. Gaurav, you are absolutely right. And that so, is, uh, see, we've often uh, used backtested data to justify performance in the industry. So I completely enough. understand your skepticism for that. But my it's point was not in backtested. I, I was a, I, I come from that universe. I think there are. Yeah, yeah. There are there are right ways and wrong ways of doing backtesting. I mean, quant quant investing is all about backtesting. It's just about um, what is the robustness that's put around this backtesting, which is where these uh, the, the, these two rules were basically saying that if it looks too bad, then it is probably really bad. But if it looks too good, then it's also probably really bad. Too good to be true. Yeah. So much. Yeah. 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 Um, and and the bias in backtesting is always about. ये एक ट्विस्ट कर देते हैं यू नो ये वेरिएबल चेंज कर देंगे तो वो 18% से 20% हो जाता है हां बट इसके अंदर क्या किया गौरव जस्ट टू राउंड ऑफ वी बीन वेरी केयरफुल अबाउट दैट राइट बिकॉज़ इयर्स ऑफ सीइंग दिस इन इयर्स ऑफ स्टडीइंग क्वांट एंड यू नो फंडामेंटल फंड मैनेजर्स एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट वो थोड़ा सा वी अप्लाइड अ जजमेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ बीइंग वेरी वेरी ऑब्जेक्टिव जजमेंट एंड ऑब्जेक्टिव और ऑक्सीमोरॉन्स बट इट हैज बीन अ वेरी वेरी डिफिकल्ट थिंग टू डू no <laughs> those are the most important things in a contract they are actually what you are yeah. saying that's how it has to be built correct because if it's purely built based on uh, optimizing returns then uska replicability is replicability replicability is next to zero it's like you know the the, the 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 big thing the other big guiding principle i have is the uh, thinking thought data is all in the past but money is made in the future what your strategy says you have made in the past should have no bearing what matters is what it did in the future because money is always made in the future as far as i am concerned i, I think that you should invest in a index and uske baad jitna risk lena hai just go ahead take your risk do derivatives do whatever you want just have Let's some amount of how, money in the index how, how do you do it personally so what's your index versus so i yeah so i am not uh, right now when the market crashed i kind of frankly moved out of the index i sold my index fund at a loss okay and i'm still still waiting to enter but meanwhile i did buy some large cap stocks which had fallen okay so so that is what i have done and uh, i kind of if you really ask me i kind of am flipping towards the momentum kind of uh things like you know in the sense ki if you buy uh, momentum is not a right way to put it but say if you see something like nestle that is like that kind of does very well Pravin, why don't you talk about that momentum thing pravin that momentum thing is very interesting i read some of your articles on so that so i uh, i am just saying that? okay oh, so i am just saying that we should look at uh, i mean like see uh, frankly i uh, feel that instead of buying stocks that the fall down i kind of look at large companies that are going up okay so so that is what i'm what i think should work so so if you are having a nifty 50 and you see that the company is up on a 52 week basis six month basis and a three month basis and and uh, you see that it is it has got positive returns for uh, and it is it is traded up on a 200 dma i think it's a great way to buy that stock and if it is like and also like you know you put one more uh, like you know 10 day dma filter to it but you know broadly i'm just saying that uh, in a way just put your money in the index fund which also is in a way a momentum kind of uh, uh, of a portfolio which kind of beats out loss making companies and puts in large companies in that place and after doing that you just kind of do whatever you feel is right in that 30 40% of corpus that you have i would just qualify a little bit up risk le lo as long as you have a long enough innings to play ha ha yeah 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 and so, this so is money and this is money that is not really critical to your survival just yeah, yeah, yeah. caveats and i'm 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 assuming you meant it with those caveats actually what i mentioned was you need to have a process you know okay. uh, mid cap large cap small cap you need to have a process you have to an asset allocation uh, you will make money Uh, if you are doing the right things, the right process, I think that, uh, making money is a factor of how disciplined you are. Uh, most people underrate that discipline part of it. Like Vikas said, right? You you don't want to uh, recommend to your clients what you don't do yourself. So my portfolio is all index funds. I don't have. Uh, I mean, I have international exposure through my four hundred one k. So that's why I don't need to invest in a in a recommended US fund. Um, but I believe in index funds. I invest in index funds, um, and you can call it. selection bias because it so happens that the 20 years i have been investing in index has pretty much blown everything else out of the water 
um in india uh, our view my view is uh, and our view is very similar i think um, whatever alpha that could have been created because of you know uh, scope drift or you know style drift um sebi has cut down on a lot of different avenues Correct. where people could show alpha where there was actually no alpha but it was just shown as alpha so um even in mid cap small cap space even if you look at the last 10 years when a lot of these alpha positions were still available it's only half of the small cap funds that actually beat the small cap index it's actually half of the mid cap funds that actually beat the mid cap index in the next 10 years i would think that ratio will start looking more like what large cap so you know interestingly vikas forgot to tell you i just mentioned that uh, i sold the etf not the index fund okay and i sold the etf probably because i could easily sell it <laughs> you know <laughs> So no, I, I like, yeah, you know, so the index funds are just as they are. In fact, uh, like you know, us make you know your SIP is also on your direct investment is also on. But I guess when the market fell, like you know, you have that it was a behavioral issue that you know you have to do something. You don't do that with an index fund where you actually you know uh, you don't actually. do that with a mutual fund in fund or an index fund you don't sell so it let me i am completely convinced about the fact that etfs are something which will do very very well however i think we are all beating around the bush in terms of what will make etf succeed it is not the product per se it is basically innovation in the etf space and the ability to buy sell at the correct price accessibility buying and selling product innovation there is so much which can be done In market ETFs. making is the i think with, with mutual funds the only advantage right now that mutual funds have over etfs is that because yeah, you have yes. a designated market maker who has to honor the price Absolutely. by law they are required Absolutely. to required to honor the nav you don't get these dis, you don't you don't get these wild discounts and premiums yeah. which you can and get in an know, etf market stuff stuff like like got of stuff like you know if you have a fixed income etf today okay technically it should be charged uh, at the, the same rate of taxation which you have as a fixed income listed security but yep. you know an etf is still being charged at a three year indexation rate with like a mutual fund etf is basically yeah. a broking product on a mutual fund platform so stuff like that and i'm telling you this whole market will explode there will be a plethora of choice for people wow. i'm very bullish you know you need to give choices to people you can't say you buy this and that is the end of it right mm. now for all your discussions on mid cap and small cap what is the alternative available in terms of etfs nothing so let that competition come in let there be more product innovation and i'm sure that thing will start doing very well the, the innovation product innovation is happening but i think because to your point right it it's surprisingly happening on the mutual fund space you, you, that's exactly what i'm saying more, it needs to be enabled but not on the et yeah but not on the etf space like you're saying and and, exactly. I, and i think i i agree with the fact that uh, for whatever reasons i mean i don't know exactly um, why uh, you know etf has not taken off in india because in any other market you look at it etf actually do a lot more volume than mutual funds do correct um, so uh, maybe hopefully this will change uh, maybe hopefully this will change so yeah so uh, uh, to to just wrap it up thanks a lot vikas and praveen pretty interesting discussion uh, i think we covered a lot of ground from uh, stock pickers market to index to active funds to pms to if and also a little bit of back testing and uh, how to invest in a core portfolio and a satellite portfolio to to paraphrase praveen uh, thanks yeah. again thanks again vikas thanks again praveen uh, it was a lot of fun yeah, uh, speaking with you and yeah. hope to do this again soon yeah thank thanks you. thanks thank you so much thanks gaurav thanks praveen thank you everybody yeah. thanks, thanks.